Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, this lecture is a beginning of the whole uh, course of solid geometry, geometry in three-dimensional space, basically. Um, so this is an introductory lecture, and there will be other introductory lectures which will introduce certain concepts uh, of solid geometry, certain figures, properties, etc. And after I will finish all these introductory uh, comments, only then I will start talking about each individual um, figure which is occurring in uh, solid geometry, about its properties, uh, I will um, prove some theorems, we will solve problems, etc. So, um, solid geometry is dealing with different uh, three-dimensional um, objects. Now, among these three-dimensional objects, obviously there are those which we already know from regular uh, two-dimensional geometry on the plane, which are points, uh, lines, straight lines, certain curves, uh, like um, circle, for instance, certain geometrical figures in two-dimensional plane, like triangles, uh, polygons, etc. So I assume that we know all these, all the flat geometry, the planar geometry, the geometry on the plane, we already know. And um, what's new uh, in the solid geometry obviously uh, is the third dimension. Okay, so um, all these elements of um, geometry, uh, geometry in two-dimensional or three-dimensional space, uh, all these um, different figures, uh, objects, uh, uh, concepts, they're all abstractions as we have al already uh, spoken about many times. So there is no such thing as a point in the real life. Point is a mathematical abstraction. Same is the straight line and same is the plane. Now, um, these are very elementary objects, um, which means it's not easy to define them. What, what is a point, what is a plane. Um, Euclid, a um, couple of thousand years ago, uh, actually put the foundation of geometry and uh, it was a, a, a brilliant achievement. Um, at the same time, he was trying to do something which probably he should not. Uh, and um, primarily I'm talking about his attempt to define certain things. Well, I will actually present you his definitions of certain things. Um, uh, I just wanted to warn you that this is not really the definitions. These are more of explanations, but not the definitions in the rigorous sense of this word. Okay, so what's Euclid's definition of point? Uh, point is what has no parts. Well, I mean, intuitively we probably agree with this. Mathematically we should not consider it as a definition, but an, as, as explanation. Now, line is the length without the breadth. So, line has the length, but it does not have the breadth. Now, um, what's next? The straight line the straight line is even uh, relative to the points on it. So it doesn't really uh, deviate as far as its position relative to any points. It's exactly the same relative to this point as relative to that point. Again, it's, it's an explanation. Don't criticize it for not being very precise. Next is a surface. Now, a surface and now I'm having the first difficulty because the surface is a three-dimensional thing and I'm using the two-dimensional board to, to draw it. But I will try it, something like this. I don't know. If it looks like a surface, if I will add these lines, maybe it looks better. 
So what is the surface according to Euclid? It's something which has the breadth and the length, but does not, does not have the uh, thickness, if you wish. Now the plane surface, <coughs> the plane surface which I can probably um, draw something like this. It's supposed to be plane, looking from, from here. Now the plane surface, uh, or just simply a plane, is something which is, well, similar to this definition, which is even to any straight line on its surface. So, these are definitions of Euclid, and as I was saying, you should not really consider them as definitions, just an explanation. Now, um, what's interesting is that these concepts, a point, a line, straight line, a plane, these are primary um, concepts. And the, the wise thing to do is just don't define them at all. Because to define them, you have to define it using some other concepts. Like, for instance, Euclid was using, was using the concepts of the lengths, of the breadths, uh, a concept of a part, like point does not have any parts, etc. Now, what are lengths, breadths, <coughs> breadths and parts? Obviously, it's not defined. Uh, otherwise, you would probably ask them to define it further using something else. So, the best thing to do is do not define the primary concepts um, in geometry. But, however, what, what you do know about these things, they do have certain properties. So, for instance, like um, if you have a line, for instance, the line has at least one point. It's kind of a property, right? So, these properties we really should pay attention to. And then we can just say, whatever objects satisfy these properties, we can call them correspondingly a point, a line, a plane, etc. Now, um, what's important is that it was necessary to, to delineate all the properties which these concepts, a point, a plane, a line, etc., um, satisfy. It, it was important to delineate all these properties to be able to build the whole building of geometry on the top of it. So we can use these properties as axioms and build all the theorems and proof, pr uh, prove the properties, etc., etc. Now, David Hilbert, in the beginning of the 20th century, <coughs> attempted to do this successfully, by the way. So he came up with 20-something axioms, um, which um, I present in the notes for this lecture on unisor.com. Now, I'm not going through all these axioms, however, What's important is, um, I would like to present certain axioms which um, are related to our solid geometry, related to three-dimensional space. Uh, I have uh, three different axioms, and these will be used in addition to whatever we know about the geometry on the plane, the two-dimensional geometry, to prove all the different theorems. So, um, let me just um, talk about these three important properties, which we would like accept as axioms. Axiom number one. Uh, now, before I start, let me just um, say that I will try, as much as possible, to use um, capital Latin letters for points, lower case for lines, and uh, Greek for planes. Alphabet. So, using this principle, <coughs> I will say the following. The axiom number one, if two points, A and B, 
belong I'm using this uh, symbol as the symbol of belongness belong to a, a straight line uh, to belong to a plane alpha two points belong to a plane alpha therefore the whole line which passes through these points also belongs to the same plane alpha well imagine this uh, board is my plane so what it says is if two points A and B belong to this plane they are on the board then the entire line which connects them which passes through them belongs to the same plane it's kind of obvious but we have to state it as an axiom <coughs> that's number one number two if two planes have a common point the point A belongs to both planes alpha and beta then intersection of these two planes is a line a straight line which contains the point A now here it's a little bit more difficult for me to um, to draw but let's do it this way for instance one plane let's say alpha is this board another plane is <coughs> this is another plane so let's say this plane intersects with that plane and there is a point of intersection well what this particular axiom says that these two planes the the board itself and 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 this plane um, intersect across the line and this would be the line actually line of intersection which passes through this point A again it's kind of an obvious but we have to assume it as uh, as an axiom it will be necessary to have something like this in the theorems <coughs> and the third one kind of obvious again if you have three points A, B and C in space which do not not on one line straight line when I'm saying line I assume straight line otherwise I would say curve okay so ABC do not belong to the same line like this then there is always a plane and one only plane which passes through them in this particular case this is the plane of this whiteboard so this is the third axiom now using these axioms i would like to as a demonstration prove a couple of very very simple theorems which again are as obvious as these axioms but I can prove them, really logically prove, based on these three axioms. And then the whole uh, solid geometry gradually will be built using these three axioms and additional theorems, which I'm uh, supposed to prove based on them. Now, obviously, I am also based on everything which we know about the two-dimensional geometry. Okay, the theorem number one. <coughs> If you have a line, straight line obviously, and a point outside it, there is one and only one plane which passes through the entire line and this point. How can it be proven? Well, 
there are actually two um, statements here. One is existence of this plane, that plane does exist, which goes through this line and end the point. And another is that there is only one. There are no two different planes which um, have this property. Okay, now let's consider I take two points on the, on the line A. Now, these three points, A, B, and C, do not lie in the same line. <coughs> Therefore, using the third axiom, the third axiom was uh, through three points not lying on the same line, we can always um, put the plane and only one. So, there is a plane which actually goes through these points. Now, the first axiom was saying that if two points belong to a plane, then the entire line belongs to the plane, the line which passes through these points. So that's, that was the first axiom, and using this axiom, now I can see that the plane which I have built be, b based on these three points actually contains an entire line. It's a logical proof. So I have proven that the plane does exist, which goes through the line and the point. Now, is it the only plane? We have to prove the uniqueness. Well, let's consider we have another point. So maybe we took some other points and draw another plane, which also goes through this line and this point. Well, then A, B and C would be three points which belong to two different planes and that's impossible according to the third axiom which says only one and one and only one plane can pass through three points not lying on the same plane so we have proven the existence of the plane and uniqueness that's it very easy theorem number two number two if you have two lines which are intersecting there is one and only one plane which passes through these both lines again proof is really trivial let's take the point of intersection and a couple of points one on one line and one on another line which are not an intersection now we have three points and we can actually draw the plane and only one plane so now we can use the first axiom since these two points A and B belong to this plane then the entire line belongs since A and C belong to this plane the entire line belongs so this plane actually uh, contains both lines is it unique? obviously yes because if there are two different planes then I would have three points which uh, have more than one plane passing through them, which is impossible according to the third axiom. Next, third theorem. If you have two parallel lines in three-dimensional space, then there is one and only one plane which contains them. Well, here I'm using the term parallel what is parallel in three-dimensional space? Well, the parallel lines in three-dimensional space, by definition, are two planes which are, number one, lie in the same plane, and number two, do not intersect. So, if I'm saying that there are two parallel lines, I'm assuming already that the plane does exist, just because of the definition of the parallel lines. That's the parallel, that's the, that's the plane where they belong to. Is it unique? That's a, that's a completely different statement uh, and it does have to be uh, proven. Well, obviously it is unique because if I can draw two different planes through these two parallel lines, then obviously I will have, let's say, these three points and uh, I will have two planes, different planes, which pass through these three points, not lying in the same line which is impossible according to the third theory, uh, third axiom. 
Now, and the, fir and, and, the, and the fourth one is, if you have a line <coughs> in three-dimensional space, there are infinite number of planes which are passing through this line. Now, I would like actually to draw it. Here is how I will draw it. Let's say this is my line. Now, if this is the plane, then I can choose and uh, basically draw a, uh, the plane which passes through this point and this line. Now, what if I have a line outside of this plane? Let's say somewhere here. Well, again, I can use this line, uh, this point, and this line, and draw another plane, which might actually look something like this. So it's like a book, open book. This is one plane, and this is another plane. And then I can choose any other point all around this line in three-dimensional space and for each position of the of the point I can have a plane so I will have infinite number of planes you can actually consider these planes as rotation of one plane around this particular line as around the axis <coughs> well basically these are very very primitive concepts which are in the foundation of the solid geometry. So all I wanted to present you is just these concepts uh, and, uh, and show how very, very simple theorems can be uh, proven based on certain very, very fundamental properties which we can assume as axioms. So this is an introduction which basically introduces the planes, uh, the lines, straight lines and points and a little a little bit about their properties. And then I will continue introducing other figures which are used in uh, solid geometry. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.